Trump administration is escalating tensions with Iran and accusing Iran of attacking Japanese oil tankers. Now, they have released their version of so called evidence, although their evidence seems to conflict with what the Japanese believe happened to these oil tankers. So, uh, let's take a look at the first video. Again, this is what was released by US Central Command in order to provide evidence that Iran was, in fact, behind this attack on these oil tankers. Take a look. There it is, you can't really see much. It's supposedly a boat with Iranians in it. And the accusation is that the Iranian boats showed up to retrieve an unexploded mine from one of the tankers. But the Japanese president of the shipping company argues that no, there were no mines. What happened was there was some sort of projectile uh, situation and that led to the explosion. So there are conflicting reports and I wanna give you the exact quote. So the president of the Japanese shipping company that owns one of the tankers said crew members reported it was hit by a flying object contradicting the US account that the vessels were damaged by mines. Also, uh, here's a direct quote from uh, the individual I'm referring to. The crew are saying that it was hit with a flying object. They say something came flying toward them then there was an explosion, then there was a hole in the vessel, then some crew witnessed a second shot. To put a bomb on the side is not something we are thinking. If it's between an explosion and a, a penetrating bullet, I have a feeling it is a penetrating bullet. So again, there are conflicting issues here and Iran is completely denying that they were behind any type of attack. The company's president went on to say a couple more things. Uh, he said, I do not think there was a time bomb or an object attached to the side of the ship. And there's, uh, he also said, there is zero possibility that they were torpedoes. And uh, oh, one more thing he said, he said, no, the explosion was further up on the ship. Right. And so it couldn't have been anything that was at water level. Now, between uh, the United States government desperate to start a war with Iran uh, with incredibly flimsy evidence, and the people who were on the ship and the placement of the explosion, it's not a close call, so um, it's clear that the United States government is lying. I just wanna be absolutely clear about that, okay? Now, the rest of uh, the media is, it's about cable news, I should say, because New York Times and some of the print media have given a clear example of the, pr the president of the ship uh, and his quotes and the, and the witnesses, etc. But on cable news, all I've seen is uh, Iran attacks American ship. The Pentagon says Iran attacks, not American ship, a Japanese ship. Mm -hmm. Iran attacks, Iran attacks, Iran attacks. I don't care that the US government said it. You're supposed to be journalists and you're supposed to investigate it and see if that actually happened or not. I this is say, obviously made up. And I know you mentioned this, but I just wanna reemphasize that I am seeing responsible reporting when it comes to the print outlets. Usually when there's a call for war, from any administration, whether it's the Trump administration, Obama administration, doesn't matter. They all join in and they all seem to support that narrative. But in this case, you know, I do wanna give the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR a lot of credit because the reporting that they're putting out there really clearly shows that there's a conflict between what the US is alleging and what the, the Japanese are alleging. <clears throat> Remember, it's their oil tanker that was attacked. But with that said, I wanna quickly go to Donald Trump's comments on this, and then I wanna get your thoughts. What sort of evidence do we have that they've done it? And what are we gonna do about it? Well, Iran did do it, and you know they did it because you saw the boat. I guess one of the mines didn't explode, and it's probably got essentially Iran written all over it. And you saw the boat at night trying to take the mine off and successfully took the mine off the boat. Yep. And that was exposed, and that was their boat, that was them. Uh, and they didn't want the evidence left behind. I guess they don't know that we have uh, things that we can detect mm -hmm. in the dark that work very well. So uh, we have that, and I know you put it on. And so no, it was them that did it, and... Do they work really well? I mean, he says we have evidence that can see in the dark <clears throat> that works really well. Although, how can we tell that that, that boat contains Iranians? 
Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Fox and Friends for actually scoring a, a Donald Trump phone call interview. Good job, guys. Not since Hannity got diamond and silk have I seen booking like this. Um, <laughs> the, there, let's talk about the good news first. There is good news. The good news is we don't go to war with Iran until President Putin decides, and Venezuela, Iran, we'll have to see. Also, mm -hmm. the good news is they're a year too early to wag a dog for an election in the case of invading Iran. But any of your conservative brothers and sisters who thought Trump meant his anti-war rhetoric should have been woken up when John Bolton joined the Partridge family bus that is our White House. Uh, the other good news is the Gulf of Tonkin was trending nationally yesterday, which tells me shows like yours and other people are making an impact because so many people were onto this scam day one. Yes. The Gulf of Tonkin was trending nationally, and that's really good news. Uh, Donald Trump is gonna next probably blame the Japanese tanker because Asians can't drive. But again, this is our fundamentalist right-wingers and their fundamentalist right-wingers who want war. The difference is Iran the mullahs, they know the truth, which is half the population of Iran is under 40 right now. Their system is aging out and these young people are not gonna be able to be fundamentalist drones like their parents and grandparents in many cases were. The society is changing and that's why they're so scared they made a peace agreement and allowed Barack Obama to earn his Nobel Peace Prize several years after getting it. <laughs> so the, right. the, the Ayatollah's goal, apparently according to Trump is, they're terrified of losing their power, so their strategy is to start a war with Iran and all get killed. <laughs> and that's the logic. Like Saddam had the WMDs, but he just didn't use them because his goal was to get caught and killed. And that's the logic we're getting. Yes, so it's two things about this. First of all, I love how flimsy the excuse is. They're like, yes, uh, the Iranians uh, drove back to the scene of the crime because they <laughs> left a bomb and right. wanted to retrieve it. And so, uh, and apparently they don't know that we were taping the tanker that was on fire. Yeah, uh, and and oh golly gee, we forgot to check the tanker for evidence earlier By the while way, it was on fire. And the Cuba Gooding and we Jr. The tape. Line. The Cuba Gooding Jr. tape is clear to see what's going on in that too. I mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, By the way, can I just mention one other questionable component to this story? So the the leader of Japan, Shinzo Abe, was in Iran. He was in Tehran meeting with Ayatollah Khomeini. And so wouldn't it be weird for Iran to randomly attack a Japanese oil tanker in the middle of this meeting with Shinzo Abe and the Ayatollah? Well, so that gets yeah. us to who actually is on that ship and who actually did the bombing. Because it appears the one people we can eliminate is the Iranians. So if they didn't do it, who did it? Because it did get bombed. And, and so one clue is that it was a, a, a plane. Because they said it came from the sky, a missile came from the sky, or if not a plane, at least a missile. So that eliminates all countries that don't have the wherewithal to have a ship, a plane or a cruise missile go undetected by other forces and hit a ship like that. So, hmm. Hmm. and then you've got to have people that look vaguely Middle Eastern in a grainy video sneak up to a boat and take off a mine they left behind. Did it have okay. acne written on the side? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, look, uh, your last clue would be, who wants to start a war with Iran? Well, John Bolton and Pompeo and those guys do, but us bombing a, a, a Japanese ship, that might even be a bridge too far, besides which Trump couldn't plan one step ahead of his life dependent on it. Um, could they then use that to lie about the situation and agitate towards a war? Absolutely. Yeah. But there are at least two other countries in the Middle East that would love for the US to attack Iran. And that is Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now, one of those countries is completely reckless. And for example, chops up journalists and goes, ah, we probably won't get caught. Right. And so it's a giant hit squad to another country with a, a bone saw. And looks vaguely Middle Eastern, or a lot Middle Eastern, right? And so I don't know who did it, and I don't know if it's one of those two countries. But that's where I would start, because you look for motive. And if it isn't the Iranians, it's people who want to blame the Iranians. Is it possible it's rogue actors? I mean, I don't want to point fingers at like, you know, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard because they did a lot of work with Ivanka for that Trump Azerbaijan hotel front. <laughs> Good going, guys. But could it possibly be independent actors, not a nation state that wants this conflict? But I know, I thought of the same thing, John. And and so do, now we're speculating. Of course, we don't know, and we're not going to do what the Pentagon did. Oh, it's true. It's, or now the Pentagon and Trump. <laughs> it's true. It's a lie. I know it. I saw it. I saw the grainy video. It's 
get to the Iran, right? So I don't know that it's definitely Israel or Saudi Arabia. Of course, we don't know that, but it's logical to to think about who would want to start a war. Hence John's point. Now, could there be some rogue actors or independent folks who also want to start a war? A lot of people gain from wars. Well, Most people lose, but oil companies yeah. win from wars. Defense contractors win from wars, but. You need either a plane or a cruise missile if you believe the witnesses. So that would lead towards a state actor. Yeah. Real quick, and uh, look, remember last week, The Intercept broke a story about how Forbes was allowing a contributor who wanted regime change in Iran to contribute to its publication. And then The Intercept found that this wasn't actually an individual, this was a group of people in Iran who have been pushing for regime change in mm -hmm. Iran, right? Yeah. So it could it could be uh, you know a member of that group. You don't we don't know. All I know is Iran is completely denying this. You know, Shinzo Abe is meeting with the Ayatollah as this oil tanker gets attacked. And at the same time, you have the president of the company that owns this oil tanker saying, no, this wasn't a mine, this was some sort of projectile, and you know. This person is putting out conflicting reports from what our government is saying. And has so, Abe offered his opinion on what happened? Because he and Trump are BFFs, I don't know if you know that. No, in fact, the Iranians said that Abe was part of this. And so they're now super mad at the Japanese for trying to get them into a war. Now, was Abe really part of it? I have no idea. I know that the president of the ship is saying the American story is not true. But I have no idea if he's connected to Abe at all. Mm. So look, again, this portion of the story is obviously speculation about different people who might have done it and who might be involved. The group that Anna is referring to is Mujahideen al Khalq, MEK. And they're nuts, they're led by a cult leader. If they can get their hands on a cruise missile or anything along those lines, would they do it? They seem like they're willing to do anything, yeah. but I have no idea that they have the capability of getting anything like that. And also, another country that wants war with Iran is the United Arab Emirates. So these are all the things that, if you actually cared to solve the issue, you would look with, you would look to for your top list of suspects. Either the people who are trying to send a message to America don't mess with us, like Iran. And by the way, if you said, hey, it might not be Iran, but could Hezbollah that is connected to Iran? be able to pull something like this off. I'd put them on a list of suspects if I'm trying to figure out who actually did it. Again, them right. having a, right. a missile of that magnitude seems unlikely, but I'd put them on the list just in case. And based on another part of that interview, I think the only kind of regime change Donald Trump is thinking about is replacing Mike Pence with Nikki Haley, which I'm much more worried about than anything else right now. Nikki Haley is an even bigger warmonger than Mike Pence. Ding, She's ding. She's a neoconservative. Now Trump, I don't know what his intentions ever were. He doesn't know what his intentions were. But even if you thought that he was in favor of peace and not getting involved in Middle Eastern wars, he has now surrounded himself with a phalanx of neoconservatives who can't wait to start another disastrous war in the Middle East. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com app.